Barbara Walters, a pioneering TV journalist whose aptitude for interviews made her one of the most well-known names in media, has passed away. Barbara Walters passed away peacefully in her home surrounded by loved ones. She lived her life with no regrets. She was a trailblazer not only for female journalists but for all women, Walters spokesperson Cindy Berger said in a statement. Before being promoted to co-host in 1974, Walters started her career in national broadcasting in 1961 as a reporter, writer, and panelist for NBC's Today Show. As the first female nightly news anchor, Walters joined ABC News in 1976. Barbara Walters is indeed a unique and talented woman that will surely be missed. Hi, welcome to You Wanna Watch. And in this video, we're going to commemorate her by presenting 12 facts about the late Barbara Walters. Number 1. Barbara was born in one of the best cities in America. Barbara Jill Walters was born in Boston, Massachusetts on September 25th to Jewish parents Dina Sellett and Louis Walters. However, she did not like to reveal the year, which reportedly was 1929, 1930, or 1931. Barbara was raised alongside three siblings, Jacqueline Walters, Waldo Walters Anderson, and Burton Walters. Her most profound relationship, and the one that explains many of her major career decisions, was with her developmentally disabled. Her classmates made fun of her sister for the way she acted and spoke. They made fun of Barbara for having a disabled sister. As a result, she became protective of Jacqueline and sympathetic to people who did not fit in for reasons they could not control. She went to Lawrence School in Brookline, Massachusetts, and later her family relocated to New York City, New York, where she attended high school at Birch Watthen and graduated in 1947. She then enrolled at Sarah Lawrence College in Bronxville, New York, from where she earned her BA in English. Number 2. Barbara's father was a theatrical producer. Louis, her father, was a theatrical producer who also founded the Latin Quarter nightclub chain. In addition to that, he was also the entertainment director for the Tropicana Resort and Casino. Her father was an impulsive man whose fortunes fluctuated dramatically and frequently. Because of her father's profession, she and her siblings grew up in close proximity to celebrities, thus she was never in awe of them. Number 3. Barbara worked in a small advertising agency before bagging a job at WNBT-TV. After she graduated from college, Barbara moved to New York City to look for work. She spent a year at a small advertising agency before landing a job at WNBT-TV, an NBC network affiliate in New York City, doing publicity and writing press releases. She joined the PR department of WNBC-TV and WNBT Radio. She then shifted into programming for WNBC-TV by early 1953. She was also a part of a newly formed team of executives at WNBC-TV that included Lou Grant writer Leon Takadian. In 1953, Barbara produced a 15-minute children's program Program, Ask the Camera, which was directed by Rune Arledge. She also started producing for TV host Igor Cassini, but left the network after Igor pressured her to marry him and started a fist fight with the man she was interested in. She went to WPIX to produce the Alois Mack Elhone show, which was cancelled in 1954. And in 1955, she became a writer on CBS's The Morning Show. Number 4. Barbara's first big break was The Today Show. Barbara Walters' first big break as a television journalist came on The Today Show. She made her first appearance period on the program covering Paris Fashion Week in 1961. But in general, she was a behind-the-scene person on the show. That began to change in 1964. Maureen O'Sullivan, a famous actress, had been a regular on the show, but she was eventually fired for not being very good at doing serious news. Barbara took her place as a Today Girl a few days a week, doing serious news stories until she became a regular on the show. It's unclear how she got the role, as Hugh Downs, the show's host at the time, and Barbara each have different memories of why she was promoted to the role that would eventually make her a star. According to Hugh's interview with the Television Academy, when Maureen left, they were combing around their roster of movie stars again, and he said why don't we just develop our own talent instead of going to another medium for it. While for Barbara, she believed that since Maureen had a very big contract with the Today Show, they certainly were not going to go out and get another big star, so they ended up putting Barbara on air three times a week for 13 weeks. Number 5. Barbara hosted her own local show. Beginning in 1971, Barbara hosted her own local NBC affiliate show, Not For Women Only, a syndicated American talk show which aired after the Today Show in the mornings from 1971 to 1976. The program was adapted by Barbara from For Women Only, a talk show hosted by broadcast journalist and art critic Alan B. Sarinen. Barbara featured a variety of topics on the show that she thought would be relevant to her audience, including mainstream topics related to women's equality, such as sensitivity training, stress, mess and is the family dying, as well as lighthearted themes such as the hostess with the mostest. 
Number 6. Barbara was the highest paid news anchor. Barbara famously signed a $1 million annual contract with ABC in 1976 to co-anchor the evening news and quickly rose through the ranks. She became a pioneer when she became a 2020 host. According to Biography.com, Barbara was the highest paid news anchor in history, earning $12 million per year. However, she decided to pursue another project, leaving 2020 to launch The View. She was one of the show's co-hosts when it debuted in 1997. Barbara eventually stepped down from the table in 2014, but remained on as an executive producer. Barbara sold her 50% stake in the show when she left, according to the Daily Beast, but the exact amount is unknown. The former television personality made the majority of her money through media ventures, but she was also an investor. Barbara's fortune is valued at $170 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Though she has stepped away from the spotlight, she remains a powerful figure in the media. Number 7. Barbara was married four times to three different men. Her first husband was business executive and former Navy Lieutenant Robert Henry Katz. On June 20, 1955, they married at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. After 11 months, the marriage was reportedly annulled in 1957. Her second husband was Lee Guber, a theatrical producer and theater owner. They married on December 8, 1963, and divorced in 1976. After Barbara had three miscarriages, the couple adopted a baby girl named Jacqueline Dina Guber born in 1968 and adopted the same year. She was named for Barbara's sister. Barbara's third husband was Merv Edelson, the CEO of Lorimer Television at the time. They tied the knot in 1981 and divorced in 1984. They divorced for the second time in 1992 after remarrying in 1986. Number 8. Barbara interviewed every sitting president starting with Richard Nixon through Barack Obama. Barbara Walters interviewed American presidents over the course of a half-century, asking them about their regrets, mothers, marriages, and even their sleeping arrangements with their wives. Barbara, perhaps more than anyone else in recent presidential history, helped reveal the men in the White House as people, using surprisingly intimate questions during the heyday of appointment television to help Americans understand their leaders on a human scale. Barbara made headlines and held presidents accountable, despite being criticized for being too soft at times. She presided over presidential debates between Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter, as well as Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. During times of national crisis, such as wars and recessions, she posed critical questions that shed light on policy and approach. Her insistence on locating the president's character and mining whatever she discovered there helped usher in a new era of personality and politics, lifting the veil on the inner lives of the men who lead the free world. She interviewed every sitting president from Richard Nixon to Barack Obama, as well as Donald Trump and Joe Biden in the years before they took office. Instead of keeping her presidential subjects at arm's length, she went to their ranches, climbed into their jeeps, and sat next to their Christmas trees, armed with pages of questions. Number 9. Barbara interviewed notable personalities around the world. Barbara Walters was a broadcasting pioneer who interviewed dozens of famous faces. Before the interview began, the Today host led Shimon Peres, the former head of Israel's Labor Party, to their seats hand in hand. She was the first American journalist to interview the Russian President Vladimir Putin after the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. In 1974, she spoke with the Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Barbara interviewed Shah of Iran Mohammad Reza Pahlavi in 1977, the first time he and his wife Farah Pahlavi were interviewed together. She also interviewed the chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization Yasser Arafat in 1977, and in the same year. During her interview with Cuban dictator Fidel Castro, she spent 10 days with the Cuban dictator and traveled through the mountains and held his gun in her lap. She also spoke with Taylor Swift and was named one of Barbara's most fascinating people in 2014, where the anti-hero singer discussed her relationship with her fans, transitioning from country to pop music, and her famed good girl reputation. We are nearing the end of our video, but before we proceed, we would like to ask you to please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash c slash you wanna watch 2022 and follow us on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash you wanna watch. Any support you provide us will help us provide you with more and better content. Okay, now back to the story. Number 10. Barbara had speech impediment. Barbara Walters has become one of television's most recognizable personalities. She was assigned a speech therapist when she first started working for NBC to work on her speech patterns and try to correct her lisp. 
lisp is a speech defect in which s is pronounced like the n thick and z is pronounced like the n this. Barbara decided to embrace her speech patterns after deciding that the therapy was making her less confident in her speech. She has never looked back. Barbara still speaks with a slight lisp, but that did not stop her from becoming the first woman to co-anchor a network news program. Number 11. Barbara created The View in 1997. Late in her career, she added a new twist to infotainment with The View, a live ABC weekday coffee clatch with an all-female panel who discussed any topic and welcomed guests ranging from world leaders to teen idols. With that side project becoming an unexpected success, Barbara referred to The View as the dessert of her career. The View, which is currently in its 26th season, has aired on ABC as part of the network's daytime programming block since August 11, 1997. A statement from the show said Barbara created The View in 1997 to champion women's voices. And finally at number 12, Barbara, a legendary and multi-awarded news anchor. Barbara knew she was good at what she did because she had 43 Emmy nominations and 8 wins including several daytime Emmy awards, her first win being the award for Outstanding Talk Show Host in 1975. She won a Peabody Award for Christopher Reeve's first interview after being paralyzed in a horseback riding accident. She also won the Lucy Award in recognition of her excellence and innovation in her creative works that have enhanced the perception of women through the medium of television in 1998. What do you think about the late Barbara Walters and the 12 facts about her? Are you saddened by her death? Did we miss anything that you think should have been included? Let us know your thoughts by writing a comment on this video. If you're interested in our other videos, just hover over the videos and just press play. Until next time watchers, thank you for watching our video.